Welcome back to Metal Rules TV, where the underground meets the playground. We're here with Chris and Tim of Faith or Fear. Amazing. Amazing. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> to uh, you end up replacing Bob Perna with Merritt Gant, mm -hmm. who Merritt later goes on to play with Overkill for Horoscope and I Hear Black. And then soon after that, the drummer Rich is replaced, right? Was that Ed Schwagel came in then? Yeah, uh, it, Bob and Rich kind of, it was almost simultaneous. Okay. So, so when I when you say after that, it, it couldn't have been more than two weeks between. Oh, one, okay. Yeah, it was a very, very uh, simultaneous happening right there between us replacing the, our drummer, and uh, and our, our rhythm guitar player. So, so it was very quick, and it, this was still like around ninety one. You guys just called Nine, quits. 90. 90? It was 90, yeah. 90, I'm, okay. thinking, I'm thinking it happened the, the last, uh, it was fall of 1990. Yeah, it wasn't the last show we did. Summer, fall. Trocadero was in 90 with Ed, with Ed and Merritt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I gotta, I gotta ask, considering the momentum and success you guys started the show with Faith or Fear, what, what brought the band to that point? Like, what, I know there's a lot to overcome with replacing members. But it seemed like you guys still yeah, had you know, on the upswing, first, you know? The first was getting, basically, the deal taken out of our hand, the record deal, just by management saying, listen, you know, management claims that it was combat, mm -hmm. um, being tight with money now, and they weren't going to, like mentioned about the video not happening, okay. and it's going to get worse, and you ought to get them for breach of contract, and we'll, we'll do that, have some monies, and you'll go on I tour, see. and we'll, we'll <clears> shop a new deal. And then we did a demo, and that's where like disintegration, the last songs on there came from that first demo. True life and the court, uh, true life was the second demo, oh, okay. which we were. That was probably some of the most progressive and best stuff we written to date. But prior to that, the other demo was um, uh, management saw it as oh, you tell or at least tell us not a lot of interest. You guys need to do something else. Hmm. We well, did the problem that. is that the management company set up. The, the the demise of with combat is that uh, the, our management company set up a very adversarial situation between combat and them, and oh, we're like, oh, you know, listen, we're just a band. We we were the innocent bystanders getting hurt over that whole so conflict. They were in fighting. They were in fighting, and we're like, man, guys, just let it go. We don't care. We just want to record. We want to play. Yeah. But it was just too. Well, we're in charge. No, we're in charge. Yeah. You know, well, we're the record company. Well, we're the management company. Yeah. Bing, bing. Next thing you know. However, where that did end up, uh, end up for us is we did get a second record deal with another <coughs> record label because we did a mini tour with Biohazard, who was on Maze America at that time. Okay. And we did five gigs. The band itself and their tour manager loved Faith or Fear. Mm -hmm. Within a month or two, we had a contract sent to our management company in Philadelphia from Maze America offering us to do a second record. Right. Problem there is, I had decided at that point I was done. I just didn't want to play anymore. Period. You had decided you were done with everything. Done. I had. I even had offers at that time, as I had spoken to you earlier, from Overkill. Yeah. Come in and replace Bobby Gustafson with no audition. Just, just. If you were to interview Blitz right now, he'd tell you the same thing. Yeah. We remember Chris. He didn't even have to audition. We just wanted him in the band. I, I didn't even want that. It was like I was trying to avoid that whole situation, dude. I don't want to play not for faith or fear, not for you, not for anybody. And mm. I just, I don't want to play right now. Yeah. So that's kind of where, and unfortunately we had another record deal on the table. It was nowhere near the magnitude of what the combat record contract was. Sure. But it was still a contract with a reputable label with yeah. Biohazard, who at the time was still up and coming mm -hmm. and doing their thing with the whole, uh, you know, Brooklyn hardcore scene. So, it, again, it's a... Andrew many quit. Yeah. No, no, no. no, no it's, it's, <laughs> it's not like that, but... No, sure. it was... It was it's, everything it was, has, uh, yeah. has their... Uh, but in has its reason. combat folded not too long after that, right? So I don't know if that was part that, of That was because of you, right? <laughs> because of you. <laughs> yeah. You're like, yeah. We're, if Chris is quitting, we are too. Yeah, exactly. We've got to vote the wrong one. I think Chris got it right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I never looked at it that way, but you're probably right. So why did um, you feel after so long the time was right to come back now? Just, uh, it was this simple. It was after all that time... Well, I, I had gotten married, three kids, all of us started family lives, this, that, and the sure. other, and then um, I got divorced You're like, about... fuck this, I don't want to uh, do anything. <laughs> I'm sick of my kids, I got to yeah, do something. Well, yeah. <laughs> and a divorce is sort of like all that, you know, yeah. Yeah, after this, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. So uh, after the divorce, there's a lot of free time, and realized, hey, this is a chance to just kind of redevelop, make a whole new you, and get back in shape, and do this, that, and the other, and... Uh, 
you don't have to quite be the family man as much anymore, although I had the responsibility of my kids. Of course. I didn't now have the restraints of, of married life where, yeah. where I, I couldn't... I, you have to be and, home and, by and rightfully, yeah. <laughs> and rightfully so in a relationship, if that's the way it's got to be, then it's got to be that way. However, um, so how you think I'm playing in a heavy metal band, <laughs> that's, that stretches the envelope. So uh, I gave CJ a quick call and uh, he picked up the phone. I'm like, we should play together. And it, it, the, the conversation in the last three minutes and I was on the phone with him, yeah. on the phone with Bob, on the phone with Ed. And it, the answer was just yes right away. Like everybody probably felt like I did like, yeah. All right, yeah. Well, you yeah. might have gotten divorced. We're not divorced yet, but <laughs> yeah. it doesn't matter. We, we it. agree with you. Let's do just it, right? do it. Yeah. Let's do it now. So, uh, and then now they're all divorced because we got the band. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> no, no, just, you got your old wives back. Your old <laughs> wives club. No, no, no. Yeah. Not, thankfully, Tim, yeah. Tim's got a great relationship, which he's had for a long, long time, and that's still going good. And they're they're very supportive of what we do. That's what's great. Um, it gives us a chance to. It gives us. It gives him, especially in the relationship that he's still in. A chance to to be who he really is, and then maybe get some things out that help the relationship on another end, offload it on some other aspect, which just helps the relationship sure. work. Because ah, I'm giving him space, letting him do what he needs to do, and he does it well, right. and that works. It just it's healthy. Excellent. So, well, well, I was actually wondering something. Okay, go for it. Um, Tim, when when Chris said he didn't want to do it anymore. What about you and the other guys? Did, was, was there any ever thought of going on without Chris, or, or was no? Nah, well, I guess. No, it's funny. I, no conferences. No, I think everyone may might have kind of felt the same. I think it was the letdown of just how the whole con, you know, the whole thing went with combat. We've lost, lost the deal. Yeah, there was something else on the table, but of course, when he quit. Or threw his hands up, however you want, you know, however you want to, you know. Lay Maybe you all felt like that and it was just waiting was like, for somebody to start? Yeah, you yeah, know, it's, I, you know, my it, would, it certainly that. wouldn't be the same because, you know, and, you know, 85 to to 90, you know, five years, it doesn't sound like a lot of time, really. Mm -hmm. We went through a lot of stuff. Sure. A lot went on and it was all together, you know, we were, you know, except, for, you know, until those changes came with Rich and, and, and Bob leaving. Everything the court was always the same. Everything was the same, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, things changed. And dude, thanks for asking that question. I don't feel so guilty about it. <laughs> oh yeah, it's good. Now that I know that he was maybe thinking the same. Did you ever thing. wonder that? <laughs> I, I he I think he speaks the truth. I think it wasn't just me that realized. I remember it wasn't maybe just how I was feeling and about just some different letdowns that happened with combat. Yeah, we got Maze America, but it's not. It's it's here as opposed to here. Yeah. No. And, People can't discount the fact that grunge was was as a strength of music was coming in I, I, and, and becoming the music to listen to I at that point. I think when we here's something I remember well. We're on the tour, and it was Rip magazine, so it was the uh, December issue was coming out, and uh, like Aerosmith or something's on the front, and we got the Santa Claus hat on. <laughs> and there's the article. There's uh, fresh, fresh blood. It was always three bands every month, and the. The article was amazing and just like um, so um, so ego strides is the best way to put it. I mean, it was just and Bob's reading it and it sounds like he's making it up. We're, no, it doesn't say that. And he won't let us see it. It's an article about and, um, you guys, right? Okay. And um, at one point, you know, the way you know we get the management, we get signed, things are going well. We're on this tour, and that article, you know, unlike the. Points off for face hair. This thing was so <laughs> positive, man. Yeah. And we were like, and we we're in Texas at the time, and it's like, this is gonna happen. Yeah. We're gonna do it, man. We're going to make it. Was the word I remember saying that or feeling that, and I think it was. It was a letdown. You know, you, we had to give up. We knew what we gave up to go on the tour, but yeah. how how deep down did you know it? Mm -hmm. So you come back and go, well, there is no there is no second album. We, we have to chop something. Okay, we worked hard at that, and there was a second demo, and then they made the, the, the showcases with Biohazard and that stuff, and and maybe collectively, you know, he was speaking for everybody, because it was, it was a true let day. We were just like, sure. Mm -hmm. And ironically, we so up, when you listen to True so Light, I think. they'll agree with it, but a, a lot of our whether they're our fans or even our critics, 
were like, man, True Life, have you heard that yet? That's just some of the best stuff they've ever written. But it was written out of angst. Your best music as a musician sure. is written either here or here. It's never in the middle because in the middle everything is just so perfect. Right. Where, where are you going to draw your inspiration from? You've got to be down here because you need to get back up. Or you're way up here, you're just, ah, oh, dude, I'm pumped. Mm -hmm. And that's where that record came from. It was just like, yeah, how dare you drop this the band? We're going to show yeah. you we're better. We're going to show you you shouldn't have dropped us. So True Life came from that. And you had uh, Shane, who uh, we have a friend that's here with us tonight that toured with Overkill and Merritt. He'll attest, one of the most listened to uh, demo tapes on that tour when Merritt first joined Overkill was the True Life CD. And I'm like, why? He goes, because Dee Dee and Blitz would always come in going, after a show, they'd come in while they're traveling to the next city, dude, put the Faith or Fear CD in. Because awesome. it was all charged up, they could hear it. Mm -hmm. Those guys having the experience they had, they heard it. They They're like, man, it just it, right? the power, the energy, the, the anger is there in that music. And it just, you know, it's just, it's what they wanted to listen to. And it was nice to have people who weren't going to give you any different story, like Shane and Merritt, yeah. call you on the phone going, hey, we're going from here, we're going to Detroit to Akron. And dude, guess what we're listening to right now? <laughs> Blitz yeah. wanted to hear True Life. And that's great because you're getting the first hand account. You're not yeah. hearing it from somebody who right. heard it. You're hearing it from a guy who was in your band. Mm -hmm. So you know he's not Joshy, and He's calling right. you just to say, yeah, I just thought you should know. That's how good it was. You quit and everything, but this is what everybody wants to hear right now. Yeah. So, so that was rewarding, even though awesome. we were yeah. well, it's, That was very, that was great. Mm -hmm. When we did that, it was great. Yeah. And um, it is puzzling now to think. <laughs> I just, eh, kind of, I knew it wouldn't be the same, oh. you know, to try to plug on. So it was an easy, it was kind of an easy, you know. And here we go. Yeah, just like Everything that. happens for a reason. Right. And then let's uh, let's take a break there, and uh, we'll talk about titanium, all the new stuff, and everything since. Go. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be back with more uh, faith or fear. Hey, look at me! It's the goddamn miracle. 